Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. My name is Laura Howlett, and it's my, my, my pleasure to welcome you here tonight to our Wednesday night service with ministerial intern Jeff Kielo Orion. Tonight, we are continuing our exploration of our monthly theme of spiritual guidance and personal responsibility. When you came in this evening, you were given a, a little flyer with some information about some of the things that are happening here at our center. First off, we have, uh, this month we have a concert coming up in about, just about 11 days from now. And so we have a little video here that uh, Joe's gonna cue up to introduce the artists in this concert. before experienced the healing power of sound and the vibrational quality of the frequencies that are generated through the crystal bowls and the didgeridoo, I invite you to make that a gift to yourself. It's an amazing experience. And I know these are phenomenal performers here sharing their gifts. So uh, tickets are available in the bookstore if you're interested. Again, it was $22 in advance, $33 a night of the door. So get a substantial saving if you buy those in advance. Um, coming up in June, we have a, a cleanup day. We do these quarterly, and the next one is June 4th. So if you're interested in volunteering to spruce up some part of our center for us, if you'd like to come together for, in fellowship with other people and just have that joy of getting together to do something that makes things look beautiful, then I encourage you to sign up in the lobby. If you ordered a T-shirt through our uh, I Am T-shirt campaign, they will be arriving between... Um, May 12th and 19th that week, sometime during that week. And so on the, on the 22nd, the Sunday the 22nd, we'll start um, passing them out. So you know, unless they get here that Wednesday, but as soon as they come in, we'll uh, give them to you. So um, we have some upcoming classes that are listed here in our, in the, on the paper. If you want more information about those, see Lynn Frankenberger at the education table or stop by and see me in the bookstore. And so these things and so many more are happening here at our center all the time. You're welcome to look on the website or sign up for our eBlast weekly uh, newsletter that we send out with information about things that are happening here at our center. And so right now I just invite you to take a moment and check your cell phones. Make sure that they are turned off. Check into Facebook first if you need to, want to. Make sure you tell them where you're at. And then... Uh, Let's get ourselves centered as we go into the meditative portion of our service. I invite you to just take in a nice deep breath. Close your eyes if you're comfortable.
And so here I rest, deep in the center of my being. And I allow my heart to open, knowing that it is a gateway, a gateway within, and a gateway to allow the flow without. And I simply surrender here. I surrender to that presence, that power, that divine creative force, that which created my heart and my mind and all the rest of my being, that which created all life, that which brought forth everything into existence the one power, the one presence, the one universal love that is forever and ever expressing itself through me, as me. It expresses itself through all of life, beautifully, creatively, that one power and one presence I know that presence is active here, in this space, in each one of us here present. The fullness and the magnificence of the divine is operating beautifully, graciously, perfectly. And I give thanks for this, for this knowing, for this feeling, for the evidence that is before my eyes of the magnificence of God. And I just simply rest in this, allowing it to be, allowing it to do. I surrender and let it go. And so it is. Be 
still, my soul, be still, be still and know. I will make a quiet place, a quiet place within my life, and I will I will make a quiet place. I will make a quiet place. I will make a quiet place. I will make a quiet Thank you, Reverend Doug, Lynn, Justin, Laura. What a beautiful way to start this evening. So my name is Jeffrey K. Aloha Ryan, and I am Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas, as is each one here present tonight. And so I want to thank each and every one of you for being here this evening. And this month, what we're exploring here at the Center is we're exploring the idea of spiritual guidance but personal responsibility, or spiritual guidance and personal responsibility, not but. Spiritual guidance and personal responsibility. And so when I was contemplating this, <clears throat> I'm currently taking a class in quantum physics and spirituality and how um, science and spirituality can be bridged by quantum physics. And the professor, Dr. Amit Goswami, has this little ditty. He goes, dooby dooby doo, right? Um, and which is all well and good, but I was contemplating this and it's like, well, doing doesn't come first. Being comes first. And so the idea then for the title is Be Do, Be Do, Be Do. And then I thought of the little minion go, Be Do, Be Do, Be Do. And how he can serve as a little reminder with his little red, you know, whirly gigs on his head and serve as a little reminder um, to be first and then do. And so what I'm inviting us this evening to do, and similar to what Laura invited you to do last week with her talk is to see spiritual guidance everywhere, <clears throat> everywhere in your daily life. That's what it was more about last week with Everyday Oracles, the book, and it's available in the bookstore still for 20% off this entire month, is to see Everyday Oracles, to see the spirit everywhere, to look for guidance everywhere and in everything and in all situations. And that is absolutely true and absolutely perfect. And what I'm inviting us to do this evening is if you can recognize it out there, then it has to be coming from within here. And so we don't always have to look for it out there. In fact, the deeper guidance, the deeper truth, the deeper um, path is going to be found when we go within. When we turn within and we listen to that still small voice, when we listen to our intuition, we listen to our higher self, we listen to our God self, we listen to our Christ consciousness and allow it to guide because it is that consciousness that maintains and sustains us. It is that consciousness that guides and guards us in every moment of every day of our lives. But we simply have to be awake and aware we have to be open and willing to listen and to be available to it. And this doesn't usually just happen by some stroke of insight, some like, aha! It takes practice. Reverend Doug's favorite four-letter word, practice. It takes practice. Daily practice. Continuous, purposeful practice of going within, of quieting our mind and stilling ourselves and going within and cultivating that relationship with the divine, 
that is the indwelling presence within each one of us. And we often do that through meditation, and we do it through prayer. And John Kabat-Zinn says, don't just do something, sit there. And so this is our invitation. Don't just do something, sit there. And allow, and be. Simply be. Be fully in the moment, be fully present, and be fully mindful. And when we do that, and when we cultivate that, then the doing is a natural extension. Whatever we are called to do in the world is a natural extension of our beingness, of our being itself. And so tonight, what I would like to do with all of you is I'd like to practice that through a practice that we call visioning. And everything that we do here at the center is through this practice. It starts here in this practice, the practice of visioning, the practice of going within, quieting our minds, opening up to the highest idea or the highest vision that spirit has for this place, for our lives individually, and for whatever ministry or program that we are working with. And so it's about cultivating that quietude and learning to trust and know that still small voice. So that's what we're going to be working with this evening. But I want to say something here about the still small voice, that voice, that, that space within, that quietude within, that stillness within. That voice <clears throat> is never judgmental. It's never critiquing, it's never angry or nasty or telling you that you should be better than what you are or you're not good enough. That is not the still small voice we're talking about. That's your inner critic. That's a whole other body of work that we get to do. <laughs> the still small voice is always loving. It is always generous. It can be forceful. It can be very directive sometimes but it is always pure intention, pure love that's coming through. In Vision Corps, uh, about a year ago, I believe it was, we were all sitting and visioning for the center and very clearly we heard, different, various ones of us heard the phrase or something similar to it is, be the way or get out of the way. Be the way or get out of the way. So that was very directive and it was very forceful, but it came from a place of loving kindness, of pure inspiration. And so what visioning does and what sitting in the silence does is it opens us up to something that we can't possibly come up with in our own limited brain capacity. Yes, there are infinite possibilities in the universe. Yes, we are that. But we are infinite potentiality here and our human mind, by being in physical form, is a limitation so that we can navigate in this world. So when we think that our human mind can do this, can or when we operate from our human mind and trying to make things happen, to create things purposefully, to make things happen, what we're able to do with that, if we're focused solely from living from our human mind, we're only able to produce limited ideas, limited beliefs, limited manifestations, limited demonstrations. Our creativity is limited because we're trying to use our ego, we're trying to use our intellect to bring something forth, to make a process happen, to make a program happen, to plan and do. And there's absolutely good use for that, but when we solely rely on that, what we are capable of is limited. However, 
when we approach it from a wide open space, opening, setting aside our own beliefs, our own limitations, and opening to the infinite possibility, and recognizing the truth of love, of joy, of peace, of harmony, of divine order, divine action, abundance. When we align our consciousness, if you will, with the consciousness of those qualities, and we bring ourselves into alignment with that, what then unfolds from there is beyond anything we could have ever imagined. And so here's an example of that. <clears throat> Last year, Laura Colleen and I and Claire, all four of us, were in a class for youth and family ministries with Dr. David Alexander. And he had a project that we were supposed to do. And the way we usually do our projects when we're working together is we always go to visioning first because spirit always has a higher idea. And so we go to spirit first. Spirit always has a higher idea. And so we were visioning for youth and family ministry. And what we realized is that the four of us were being called to serve in the youth and family program here at the center. Claire was already doing it. The rest of us were like, oh, no, 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 no. Colleen's raised her too. Laura's a former school teacher. I'm a former school teacher. We've done our time, is what we were saying. And because we were experiencing that resistance, we absolutely knew. And because this is not something that any one of the three of us really wanted to do, we knew that it was spirit guiding and spirit directing. And this was the directive of spirit. And so here spirit is, we're sitting in this being state, here's what spirit's revealed, and now it's ours to do. Okay, so we surrender to that. Because we've also learned the more you fight spirit, spirit's always going to win. You might as well just say yes now, rather than going through getting all beat up over here, and then saying yes later. So, yes now. So, what that then turned into is that we were working with a curriculum and there were some stories that were kind of like, yeah, I didn't really care for them as I was in the lead teacher role and the stories just weren't that exciting and motivating for the kids or anything. And so it's like, okay, there's, got to, there's something better here. And so I was doing my other job. I was massaging at the time, working on a client, and all of a sudden this download came the spark of inspiration came for a children's story called Gladys the Goldfish Astronaut. Gladys who wants to become an astronaut. And I shared that with the kids. And then what happened is three more downloaded for that month. So now I have four children's stories that have come through and they've downloaded. Something that was never possible had I not said yes, had I not been sitting in the beingness and then taken action on the doingness. Jumping forward a little bit, we had another class. A project was in that class. I was already working with the kids, so another project came through of doing a children's book based on the what we believe statements, or what we believe statements here. Using Prince, the dog, uh, Ernest Holmes' dog, um, to tell the story, to share the principles and languaging that the kids could understand. And so that was all exciting and wonderful, and so that moved through. And I said yes to that and created a little PowerPoint for that. And then I let it all sit off to the side after that was done. Germinating, 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 germinating. And now, spirit has been rattling my cage again, saying, hey, remember that over there? Yeah, that's yours to do? Do it. So I contacted Science of Mind Publishing, and this is where the part of the doing comes in. I contacted them, asked for permission. I just got permission to go forward with the book, and Margaret de Klerk, one of our beautiful beloveds here, is illustrating it for me. So this all kind of finished up this, this week as it kind of came through. And so this part of it, this divine order is happening, is coming through just... Yesterday, we got the permission to move forward. 
And so it's super exciting, but it's also not something I ever, ever, ever could have dreamed for myself, ever could have thought of as a possibility had I not been sitting in the being and said yes to the doing. And it's not like I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? I'm not trying to sit here and figure out, okay, how am I going to get them to publish it? What is it going to do? What it, you know, I'm not going that far. I'm only doing that which has been put before me. Because that's the next guided step of spirit. It's not my logical idea of, okay, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Spirit says, contact science of mind. Okay, I did that. I acted upon what was revealed. Spirit said, contact Margaret. After Laura overheard Margaret in the bookstore say something about her being an artist and liking to do illustrations. That was an everyday oracle that happened. Laura shared that with me and I was like, Margaret. She's like, yes. And so this vision of sitting, this vision of being, being with the vision, living it, living the vision, and then taking action upon which, that which has been revealed, the doing piece, has led not only something for my own creativity, but it's allowed Margaret her creativity. And what I'm knowing is that it's going to bring this teaching to a whole new generation in a really accessible and fun way. Wow. Much larger than I could have ever, ever imagined for myself. And it all started with visioning and living the vision. So here at the center, we do have a very, very, very active vision core. It says, there we go. We do have a very active vision core here, and here are our vision core members, Reverend Doug Fogelsong, Colleen Tanaka, Laura Hallett, Kelly Capsar, Ed Ryan, Stacy Vogel, me, Michelle Pick, Michelle Sloan, Christine Page, and Sheila Callum. And if you're here tonight, I would invite you to please stand so that everybody can see who you are. And Ed's back there in the corner, holding high watch for us tonight. So I want to thank you for your service. The Vision Core has been very active since fall of 2010. We meet twice a month to vision for the center, to vision for the programs and the ministries of the center, and again, visioning in our own personal lives. Each one of us has a strong visioning practice in our own personal lives. Our wedding, Ed's and my wedding, was a production, or was a demonstration of the vision. It was an unfoldment of the vision. We went into visioning for the planning of that wedding. It was not um, you know, something that I sat down and I want this and I want this and I want this. It was, it was through visioning that everything was revealed. So each one of us has a very strong visioning practice. And the vision core is not a doing group. The vision core is a being group. The doing of the vision core is to be the presence of consciousness. Be the presence or be the vision to live the vision of the center. And to do our own personal work, our own personal spiritual practice, to be able to be the vessels through which spirit can reveal itself. That is the doing of the vision core. Implementing things, sometimes there's something, some of that that comes through. But implementing programs, implementing ministries, that's the work of a whole other group. That's the work of the leadership council. That's the work of Reverend Doug and the staff. That's the work of whoever has chosen to take on a project. But the vision core itself is a being group. The doing there is to be the presence of consciousness. Is that really clear as to what that is? So, <clears throat> tonight we're going to do some visioning together. I gave you a sheet when you came in. You should have received a sheet that has uh, some questions on it and a pen um, attached to it. And so when we go through the visioning process, the visioning process was uh, first created by um, Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith down in Agape. That's how he founded his center. 
And so this process arises out of a meditation process, a kind of a contemplative meditation process, where we go within and become quiet and still. And in the stillness, a series of questions are asked. And when the question is asked, then I invite you to open your eyes gently, record anything that comes through, and then close your eyes again. And just be in the silence. You're listening not for your highest idea, but for spirit's highest idea of your life expressing as you. This is not what Laura thinks her highest idea is of her life. This is what spirit's highest idea is of Laura's life. And so, just briefly, these are the questions. These are some of the four questions that we, um, kind of the standard questions. There's more questions that come through frequently, but these are the standard questions. What is the highest idea for my life? How does this infinite see itself as me? Also in that is what does it look like? What does it feel like? What is, are there any words or symbols or phrases associated with this vision? All that would come underneath that question. The second one is what must I embody or become? Or what must I embrace in order for this vision to manifest? The third is, what must I let go of or release in order for the highest idea to unfold? And then the fourth one is, is there anything else? Okay? Anything else to be revealed in this moment? So I invite you to get comfortable. And I invite you to sit with dignity, whatever that means for you, but I invite you to sit with dignity. And turning to your breath, realizing that it is spirit that is breathing you. I recognize here and now that love is present. Unconditional, abiding love of the divine. And so I breathe into it. And I feel it fill my body temple. I recognize that love is the truth of who I am. That there is only love. And as there is only love, there is peace and harmony. The wisdom of the ages that transcends time and space. There is an all-knowing intelligence, a love intelligence that makes itself known here and now. So I breathe into it. And I take a moment to commune, to be in conscious union with the love intelligence that I call spirit or God.
in the stillness, in the silence, I ask, what is the highest idea for my life? What is the highest idea for my life? How does the infinite see me? How does the infinite see itself as me? You may hear words or phrases, songs. You may see images, or symbols. Or You may just have a feeling sense. Vision is not about sight. It's about idea. God's highest idea for your life. And so however it's revealed for you, I invite you to make note of it on your sheet. Are there any words or phrases associated with this vision? Any symbols? What is the feeling tone of it? And so breathing into this vision, I ask, what must I embody or become in order for this vision to manifest? What must I embody or become in order for this vision to manifest? going deeper. What must I let go of in order for the highest idea to unfold? What must I let go of or release in order for this highest idea to unfold? And is there anything else to be revealed at this moment?
And so what I already know, what I know, is that this vision is already complete in the mind of God. There's nothing I need to do to figure out how to make it come about. It already is. I don't need to try to interpret the vision that's been revealed here this evening. I simply let it be. And in that beingness, as I yield and surrender to it, I experience a greater yield in my life. And so I accept what is mine to do. And what is mine to do, my own personal call to action is to embody that which has been revealed for me to embody and release that which has been revealed for me to release. For this is my work. This is my spiritual practice. This is what I'm being asked to do in service of this vision. And I say yes to it. And so I give thanks here and now for everything that has been revealed here tonight in this moment. I give thanks for the beauty beauty and the perfection and the magnificence of the vision itself. And I sit in awe of it. And I know that God goes before me and prepares the way. And for this, I am truly grateful. So I release this into the law, the creative process of the universe, knowing that it is already done, knowing that it is already complete, knowing that I am living the vision now. I let it be so, and so it is. So I'd like to take a moment here now to um, invite you to turn to somebody seated near you um, and share two things, if you feel comfortable to do so. I invite you to share two things. The two things I invite you to share is what are you called to embody or embrace or become? What are you called to embody? So the second question on your sheet. And what are you called to release? The third question on your sheet. You're just sharing these two things because this is the work of visioning. This is where you get to take action. This is what you get to take into meditation. This is what you get to take into prayer. This is what you get to take into your forgiveness work, your journaling work. All of your spiritual practices are these two questions. This is your work to do. The vision already is. But here's your work. So by giving it voice, what's yours to do You're claiming it and saying yes to it and affirming that, yes, I'm willing to do this work. So I invite you to turn and share with another or a couple others um, in a very small group um, those two questions, those two things. I'll give you just a few minutes here to do that. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and change partners. Make sure everybody gets a chance to share.
Anybody need more time? Okay. So acknowledge your partner in whatever way feels comfortable and right for you. Acknowledge the beloved who's witnessed you and witnessed your vision, witnessed your work in the world. And so I just want to draw your attention to this slide here, keeping in mind that the vision already is, the being and the doing of it, the being, be available, awake and aware, be open and willing, be the consciousness of the vision itself, the doing, do the work of embodiment and release through prayer, forgiveness and other spiritual practices, and do the next step that's indicated by spirit, not what your limited mind thinks you should do. And that's the key. And so I invite Justin now to share a song that came through him in his own quiet contemplation time and his own spiritual practice.
So we have entered, on Sunday, we entered into our first week of what we're calling our Stewardship Focus Program for this year. We used to call it the Giving Intention Program, and now, through visioning, actually, that title and the focus and everything has changed. So we're calling it the Stewardship Focus Program. And our vision and our mission for here at the center has been revealing itself and revealing itself and revealing itself so clearly that it just felt like this is now the time. We're taking action on that which has been revealed for us to do. And so while we're still asking our members and our friends to fill out a giving intention card and bring that back to the center, filling out that giving intention, that making that financial pledge of support, if you will, really what the next six weeks is really about is focusing on discovering more about the center itself, more about the center and what we have to offer here. It's more about discovering the positive impact that the center is having on the lives of its people. It's about focusing our, on our discovery of how your support dollars are used and what the programs that we offer and what they go to fund. And it's also about focusing on where we're going from here and how we are expanding. And so this whole uh, stewardship program was visioned for. Anything that's ever been successful here at the center, a program or a ministry that has ever been truly successful here at the, at the center is something that has come through visioning, whether it be at the vision core or the group of people that are wanting to produce something or create something, visioning for their from there first. Visioning is not a one-time deal, as I shared with you. Visioning is an ongoing process. You don't just get to vision once, get an idea, and then go do. The practice is the doing. And so the entire stewardship program really came through visioning, and the different components of it came through visioning. The I Am shirts that Laura talked about earlier, that was through visioning that that emerged. That idea was clear, clear, clear in visioning. The t-shirt showed up. The design of the t-shirt showed up in visioning. The bingo card that I hold here also came through visioning. And so this bingo card, we have them available in the back if you didn't get one. We're calling it Human Bingo, and your opportunity here is over the next six weeks to visit the different places in the center that you may not have seen before, visit the different ministries, visit the different opportunities to serve, and go and get a signature. And then on Father's Day, which is the end of the stewardship focus program, we're having a jazz brunch. You can bring this and your pledge card and turn it in for a raffle ticket to win some glorious, fabulous prize that has yet to reveal itself through visioning. <laughs> It's coming through visioning, so it's going to be magnificent and fabulous. We know that for sure. And so one of your squares here, so you just need to get a little signature. You just need to get somebody's signature. So one of these squares here, um, in fact, this square here, the left middle one, is attend a Wednesday night service. Hey, you guys have already done that. See one of us who have been up on the platform or a, a prosperity acceptor, and we'll be more than happy to sign that card for you just to sign off on it initially that you've already been here. So hey, you've already gotten one of the nine. Awesome. The other thing that came through visioning to express more about how the center itself is impacting the lives of its members is through video. And before we go to that, I do want to show you our vision and mission here that has so clearly come through the visioning process that we are living more and more every day. The vision is we envision a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. And the mission is inspiring conscious union with God. You'll be hearing a lot about that during these six weeks and in the year and years ahead. But I want to share with you the impact that this center has had on four of our beloveds. So, Joe?
I used to think about whether or not I was able to do something, whether I had the time or the energy or whatever, before I agreed to do something for someone that was difficult or otherwise costly. Now, I think about whether I choose to do it, whether I choose to do it for the good. That's love in action. I am Peg Ross, and I am Center for Spiritual Living, Ray of Las Vegas. I never imagined there was a place full of people who shared my belief system. People who live in the flow of life, in gratitude, grace, and abundance, as a result of our experiences at the center. We now revel in the energy of the center and everyone we meet here. We immerse ourselves. We take classes, we share, we give. We drive 80 miles one way to be part of it because everyone is so open, welcoming, positive, and full of spirit. It rubs off on us, and we hope it rubs off on you and everyone in our lives. My name is Christine Pichor. And I am Randy Bauman. And, and we, we are, are Centers, Centers for, for Spiritual, Spiritual Living, Living Greater, Greater Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. I used to believe that God was outside of me. But because of the center, I now know, accept, and believe that the Spirit of God lives within me. And to the extent that I tap into that indwelling Spirit is how I show up in the world. I tithe to this center as a direct reflection of my faith, and because this center is my inspiration and guidance. The teachings allow me to show up boldly and decisively in my own life. I am Peggy Calhoun and I am the Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. card. There's the square you want signed tonight. <laughs> and here's the vision and the mission. And so everything that we do here is vision-led, vision-led and mission-driven. And our conscious giving, the gifts that we give tonight, go to fulfill the mission and the vision of Center for Spiritual Living. So I invite our prosperity acceptors forward I invite you to prepare your gift, your tithe, your offering. Doing so, realizing that there is only one source, one supply, one infinite abundance in the universe that, with, that withholds nothing. It already is, it already flows, it already gives. And so our giving this evening is just an extension of that in physical form. And so I invite you to hold it close to your heart. Giving from the heart. Releasing it out into the world where it does good. And so it is.
And so I invite you to say with me, nice and loud, I am Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. Make me believe you, come on. I am Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. One more time, why not? I am Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. I am Jeffrey K. Aloha Ryan. I am Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. Thank you. You want to stand up? Get some energy going while we close. Use me, oh God, I stand for you, and here I'll abide as you show. Everything. 